This is uh, Textile Design, The Path Forward, which feels like a really appropriate theme this particular crazy year. Uh, we have a very exciting lineup of speakers today and tomorrow, and we hope you're able to join us for both days. Um, so with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm Marsha Weiss. I'm the director of the Textile Design Programs at Thomas Jefferson University, formerly Philly U, formerly Philadelphia Textile. I'd also like to uh, like to acknowledge my team that's with us, Becky Flax, Jen Rhodes, Megan Kelly, and Shannon Robbins. Um, so we're, we're very happy to have everyone joining us. And with that, I think we're gonna turn it over to our first amazing group of presenters. This is the Krypton team. Welcome Denise, Sydney, Katie, Elise, and William. We're gonna Hi. let you take it away. <laughs> Hello everyone, good morning. Thank you so much for having us. Let me um, pull up my screen here. All right, all right. Here we go. Well, thank you so much for having us today. We are um, we're thrilled to be here. Uh, today we're gonna talk about um, performance fabrics. We're gonna talk about um, how each of us here in our, in our group um, kind of came into the roles that we're in at Krypton and sort of the path that, that led us there. Um, my name is Elise Gabrielson and I'm the Director of Market Marketing for Krypton Home Fabric. Uh, Krypton Fabric creates and designs high performance indoor fabrics for the hospitality, healthcare and residential markets. Our fabrics are permanently stain and odor resistant and are very durable while being pretty and soft. I'm here today with some of my amazing colleagues who you'll meet shortly to talk about some paths in textile and design business that we've taken and to share with you our passion for the performance part of the industry. Um, you've all, you all have already honed in very specifically on what you feel your true vocation is embarking on the study of just textile design and we admire that. And we wanna offer up some ways today to think about how that fits your life and what sparks your passion. On the screen here, uh, we've posed some questions that you might want to think about while we're going through the presentation and just questions you might want to ask yourself in general when it comes to, to your career path. I know I personally wish I would have asked myself some of these things back in the day. Um, things like, what gets you out of bed in the morning? Uh, what is it that you want from your life? Um, you know, on fire, the performance category is hot for 2021 and beyond. Is it for you? had to make sure we had to plug performance fabrics in here too. And then success, you know, how can you, what can you weave into your life and your interest to kind of ignite your passions um, in regards to, to the career that you choose uh, moving forward? Um, there's so many avenues in the textile and home furnishing industry. Chances are you'll do more than one thing over your career and quite possibly more than one at, one at once. I think the more that you can explore and the more that you can really, you know, experience all different types of things, it's only going to kind of help you really find, you know, your true, your true place, your true, you know, place you want to spend every day um, in your career. As long as whatever you're doing feels right, as long as you can get happily lost in a day at work, you'll, you'll be a success and bring success to the people around you. Our team has examples of all of this. We're all so different, yet we've all found a spot in the industry and at Krypton, I think that fits us to a T. There's no doubt that performance is one of the hottest categories in the decorative fabrics arena in 2020 and will continue to be for some time to come. And we'll explain why and what that means for the future of textiles. It wasn't always, and we're so excited to be in this field right now. And we kind of want to share with you how we got there and how the company and the brand of Krypton um, got to where it is today. So Krypton, uh, Krypton was founded in 1993 by husband and wife team, Randy and Craig Rubin. Craig, was, Craig had a background in a lot of different things and came from a family of inventors who had multitude of different patents um, that they had created over the course of you know, 10 to 15 years. Randy was a true marketer and worked as a spokesperson for one of the big automotive brands here in Michigan. They also had a vinyl company that they owned and sold into healthcare and hospitality market as well. So they were really dialed into the contract space. Many of their customers uh, expressed that the want or the need of having a fabric or something like a vinyl, um, something as durable as a vinyl, but, but more of a textile, uh, more of a soft and a durable textile. 
And so one day, Craig being the creative and the inventor that he is, he was walking in the diaper aisle at a local grocery store, picking up diapers for their grandkids. And Craig had an idea. What if they could create an upholstery fabric with a moisture barrier on the backside of the fabric, similar to how a diaper has the barrier, you know, underneath the actual diaper part. And that's how Krypton Fabric was born. With Randy's expertise in brands and marketing, they met and sold to companies like McDonald's and Marriott and huge healthcare systems. And Krypton became the dominant player in the contract space. In 2010, in 2010, Krypton Home Fabric was launched. This was before performance fab fabrics were really a, a thing or had really taken off in residential market. We learned a lot about what types of fabrics this market wanted and needed and spent a lot of 2010 and 2011 fine tuning and working on the design of the textiles. In 2015, we signed an exclusive agreement with Valdez Weavers, one of the largest mills in the US to be our exclusive partner for Krypton Home. In 2016, you could find Krypton Home in over 60 plus furniture manufacturer showrooms. And this is when the performance category generally took off and became something that consumers were wanting and needing in their homes. In 2017, Krypton was purchased um, by Berkeley Capital. And in 2019, Krypton purchased a textile mill, Abercrombie Textiles, which opened up the door and gave us the capabilities to weave and design our own goods in the United States. In 2019, Krypton Home Fabric um, saw a large, uh, a large growth moment, um, getting huge placements at national retailers like Crate and Barrel, CB2, and Our House bringing us to where we are today. Uh, 2020 has been quite the year, a global pandemic, making people spend way more time in their home, um, using their furniture in ways that they never thought, you know, schooling on their sofa, uh, Zoom calls in their living room and in their kitchens. So we've seen an exponential growth in our, um, in our, for our company, given the fact that people really are expecting and needing fabrics that are super durable, and, and pretty at the same time. So what I'd like to do next is introduce you to our residential team, who each of these of our, of our team is gonna talk through what they do at Krypton, how they got to the position that they're in today, and some of the things they've learned um, across, you know, over the years. So I'm gonna introduce Denise, William, Sydney, and Katie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and she's going to start. Um, so we kind of thought that as far as cadence goes, we could kind of walk through sequentially, starting with design um, and then talking through sales and outreach and then ending with marketing. And then at the end of this, if you guys have questions, um, you know, you can type them in the chat now and we will gladly and happily answer your questions uh, at the end of the presentation. Denise? Hi guys, um, I am so fortunate to work with this team. They are really a creative powerhouse. Um, some of you might know me as an adjunct at Jefferson teaching a couple textile courses, but let me just give you a brief introduction on how I came to be here. I also wear a second hat as creative director at Krypton. My passion brought me to teaching um, at textile, well, at Philadelphia College of Textile and Science, then Philadelphia University and now Jefferson University. Um, over 20 years ago. Uh, in high school, I focused on art and math. I really enjoyed the two. So my art teacher actually suggested a summer workshop program at Philadelphia University at the time. Um, and then I was hooked. That was it. That was where I was going to college. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science majoring in weave structures. My first job was in New York at Burlington Industries as a designer for drapery um, and bedding. I was there for 10 years. It was there where I really honed my skills as a merchandiser. One of my favorite responsibilities was having doing trend presentations at uh, customer meetings and uh, you know, seasonal markets. That led me to my second job at Craft Tex Mills, uh, where I was responsible for distribution and merchandising. It was during this time that I was uh, asked if I'd be interested in teaching at Philadelphia University. They were looking for young textile professionals 
to really invigorate the students and say, hey, there are careers out there in textiles. Uh, and I've been doing it ever since. I am no young, longer a young professional, but I'm still extremely passionate about this industry. Uh, so I've been teaching for uh, 20 years, uh, as well as working at the same time. Craft Text was sold in 2009, and that's when I became a contract designer, taking on contract jobs. Uh, I differentiate that from a freelancer because I wasn't doing multiple things. I was only doing one or two things for a longevity of time, making it more of a contract position. So my skills with leaf structure, trend presentation, and merchandising led me to work at Dora Lee for 10 years as design director of sourcing. And that's where I started overseas sourcing fabrics. In early 2019, Dora Lee filed for bankruptcy and I took time off to just kind of figure it out. Like, did I want to do textiles for the second half of my life? I mean, I loved it, but was there another passion in me? As serendipity would have it, I was on the campus of Jefferson and Jack Egger, whom I worked with at Craft Text for 10 years, and who is now VP of sales at Krypton, was given a, a presentation on performance fabrics. And we sat down and talked. Two months later, I found myself as director of design for Krypton Fabrics. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> and then with the acquisition of Abercrombie, now creative director of residential fabrics. Um, yeah, so we'll go to the second slide and I'll just quickly take you uh, through with uh, some of the things that I do. So in the design department, we work as a team and we start with um, really conceptualizing. We work on two major introductions a year in residential. Um, and one of the things with the uh, concept building is we really look at studying trends that also not only means, you know, trends of like, you know, what's in style, what's in fashion, what's going to be here in 18 months, two years, but it's also market research. Uh, current events really affects, I mean, this whole COVID-19 is definitely going to affect some of the things that we're designing going forward. And it's also being aware of our past successes and also our failures, um, just to learn from them. From that development, we go on to uh, really designing pattern, color, and then finishes because performance fabric is really our niche. Um, our team collaborates with our marketing, sales, and our chemists, which is a really important part of it too, for the most optimal, pro optimal products. And then the end result is a beautiful line of performance fabric that is introduced biannually to furniture manufacturers, retailers, wholesalers, and designers. So that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> So I'd like to introduce now William Storms, who is senior director, senior designer at Abercrombie. Hey, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to ask that you please excuse what I'm calling my quarantine jitters. Uh, present presenting over the past six months has been on a real low, so uh, it's nice to meet you. I have notes, but I might not look at them. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you for the introduction, Denise. I am a senior designer uh, with Abercrombie Textiles. Um, I'm going to speak a bit about my personal work first. Uh, my perspective from our residential team is definitely from behind the loom. Um, so when after work, after looking at files all day, I go home to my two looms, one being a 16 harness um, double beam AVL Compu W4, and the other being a four harness jack style uh, floor them and I weave more um, and it's sort of that connection with the actual process of figuring out structure and I, I just cannot get enough of it and I know if you are that type of person and you have that weaving brain you know how you never stop the like curiosity and figuring out how to problem solve never stops so that mathematical approach with, coupled with color theory and material um, it is my career and my go home too. So um, I have been very fortunate to uh, show with some artists for New York Textile Month last year. Um, Molly Haynes and I did a show together, which you can see in the bottom left corner. Those are actually two of Molly's pieces behind me. Um, and then above that are just a few uh, materials that I was preparing and seeing how color balance work together and, and mixing um, different fibers and dry versus sheen. And then um, to the right is a photo of my recent handwoven collection with uh, Crosby Street Studios. So um, I 
yeah, I'm, I'm still figuring out what it is my personal work means, but um, it's been an incredible journey so far and I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing. So um, I will go into my background a bit. Uh, I applied to FIT um, in Chelsea, uh, in New York. On the last day they were accepting applications uh, to the last major available, which was fine arts. It was a total leap. And um, my second semester there, I saw, and just reflecting like, okay, what am I going to do? Painting is incredible. I love it. It's not exactly a trade that I can bring to a company. Um, and I saw that I can transfer to jewelry design. I can go to textile design. And the minute I saw a loom, I was like, what is this thread piano? How do I get on it? <laughs> Um, and then the drafts behind it where it's like binary code and you can start to see how the red and white or black and white squares translate to fabric. And as Denise and I have discussed several times, like the first time you weave a structure that is supposed to be flat and it collapses, something like goes off and you're like, holy cow, this waffle weave is incredible. Like you're breaking the dimensional barrier. And um, I mean, you can see from the rugs, uh, I love a deflected weave, which is in the same category. Um, uh, from there, I um, fortunately, I received a scholarship from Carlo Bruni Sarkozy, and next thing I knew, I found an apartment on Craigslist in Paris. I was in a weaving school with nine French girls, uh, and I did not speak French. They took incredible care of me, and we're still friends, but um, I ended up learning these fascinating, like, traditional French techniques with 100 ends per inch of silk uh, on two warts. It was almost 200 ends per inch. That can't be right. Um, and I was doing pleats and uh, taking passementry and ribbon courses, and uh, which has obviously influenced my work a lot today. A lot of it uh, on the personal side is very trim oriented um, in experimenting with larger materials. Um, uh, actually, if you can you go to the next slide? Sure. Um, so the top right is a traditional passementry technique that I uh, ended up inlaying a leather lace and um, cigarettes, which was a Whole part of a different series. But um, uh, after the scholarship, I returned to the US. Um, a friend of mine was a creative director for uh, uh, Mercado Global, which was uh, working with artisans in Guatemala. So the next thing I knew, I went there and was traveling to work with the artisans um, on developing woven structures and seeing where the line between their heritage and culture and what will work for the US market how that can fit together, um, which is a very del delicate line to balance. Um, but I guess what I'm getting is uh, textiles is so global that you travel everywhere. Every country, every culture has its own specific technique and its own history that they bring to the table. Um, so someone made a comment when I was younger, like, if you want to travel and you should be in textiles. And I, I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's incredible. So uh, that is my personal work. Um, my first job was at an, I, at, through my internship uh, with Chappas Textiles. I was hand weaving fabric for high-end interior designers in New York. It was like $300 a yard. Uh, we did not test. We did not finish. We recommended knit backing. Um, but it was all hand-woven custom luxury upholstery. And my first project was like Bill Gates' yacht or something like that. And I was like, oh, cool, I'm designing fabric I can't afford to sit on, um, but that's okay. So um, it was great. And uh, I was simultaneously a weave technician at, at FIT um, for a year. So I was hand-weaving three days a week uh, and then working at FIT in the lab with students. My boss at FIT recommended me for a position at Sunbury. And when your boss recommends you <laughs> to apply for a job, you should probably do it. <laughs> um, and so I went to Sunbury. Uh, I was in the five-story townhouse in Soho um, as a designer, worked with our incredible team. The mill was in Pennsylvania. I thought it was a huge corporation. I was like, wow, this is incredible. And it, it was. But now looking back, I see that it was this special boutique Jackhard mill. Um, uh, Sunbury was acquired by Glen Raven in 2017, and a year later, I was offered the opportunity to move to Burlington, North Carolina, um, and I did it. I was in New York for 10 years. I, I moved down, bought a car, lived alone in a town of 8,000 people, which was a huge transition from New York City, um, and it was an incredible experience just starting to work in High Point and work with furniture manufacturers and really see um, what a incredible company like Glen Raven could uh, 
was doing as a domestic mill. Um, my entire career so far has been working with primarily domestic mills, which is like what I'm doing with uh, Abercrombie specifically as well. Um, and domestic mills are transitioning. Uh, there's a lot of promise, I'll say. Um, so yeah, a month before the pandemic, I left Glen Raven and I joined the team, uh, the Krypton team, specifically with Abercrombie. Moved back up to New York and uh, then quarantined up there. So um, it's been great over the past few weeks to be driving uh, back down to the mill. And um, my time there is really working with the design directors, whether it's residential or contract, and executing their vision um, of taking that market research and those trends and translating it to like, okay. We're going to do this construction on three quarter count. It's 142 ounce per inch. We're going to do pick and pick um, 64 picks per, uh, per inch, but it's two card per line. So there's 32 on the face and 32 on the back. And when we say performance fabric, there's a large portion of that that relies on finishing, but it really starts at the weave level because you have to pass Martindale, brush pill, um, all of these requirements. So it is a dance that we do. Um, and it's incredibly, uh, satisfying when it works out um i'm super excited to show our first line uh, all together at the end of uh coming up showtime um i am officially rambling and uh <laughs> please let me know if, you any, if you have any questions um yeah i uh the last thing i'll just say is that um we're work primarily in eat uh and if you are that same weaver brain when you submit a loom file from whether it's whether I'm submitting it from Brooklyn or submitting it from the mill at Abercrombie, walking back into the weave room and hearing this like churning symphony of looms, it is one of the most intoxicating things you can hear as a textile person, no matter where you're coming from. Um, and I'm like getting tickled. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to introduce the director of residential outreach, um, Sydney. Sydney and uh, yeah, take it away. Good morning, guys. So I am coming from a background that has nothing to do with textiles or furniture originally. So I hope that that, um, that gives those of you who may not originally have some training in this, some, some heart and some inspiration to go into that industry. So we'll go through, I guess, a couple of the images on the first slide, a little bit about some things I like to do and some about my background and education. So in my free time, I love before COVID, of course, to travel. That's Israel on the right side there. I also love to bake and I also compete in my free time in body painting competitions and submit those paintings sometimes to gallery openings and, um, and to fine art shows. So in terms of my education, I actually started in a dance setting. So I got a scholarship in high school to go to the North Carolina School of the Arts for Modern Dance. And then afterwards got a scholarship to go to the University of North Carolina at Greensboro for Modern Dance. And when I was attending UNCG, a professor named Killian Manning really ignited a passion for communication and for speaking and for the study of, of communication studies in me. And so I decided to get a second degree at the same time in communication studies. So, um, so it really was because of that professor that, that I am here and also because of her that I am able to communicate the way that I am. So really, really your teachers are your, are your best asset in school. Um, so after I graduated, I actually moved to Texas briefly and I helped run a chain of drive-in movie theaters and it was a huge failure. And I think that one of the things that's really important to learn from is failure in your career. To me, my failures throughout my career have been some of the biggest teachers rather than my successes. It's really great to have successes, but I cannot say enough how important it is to have failures and also be able to talk about them and talk through them and know that this is what happened. This is what I know went wrong. This is how I cannot do this again in the future. Um, so I think that being able to do that is a really, really important skill. And that was one of the things that experience gave me. So I moved back to North Carolina where I grew up and I sort of started beginning to put my resume out and I ended up sending my resume to a girlfriend of mine that I that actually I knew from the North Carolina School of the Arts when I was in dance school. And she was a cellist and she had actually 
completely gone the other direction as well and was working at a place called Furniture Land South, which is the world's largest furniture retailer. It's 1.3 million square feet of furniture. And it is, if you ever get the chance to go, it is the Disneyland of furniture. Um, I cannot stress enough, if you are looking for a research facility to look at what is on the floor and what is important at retail right now, it is a great place to go to just take it all in and you won't be able to do it all in one day. So I got a job at Furniture Land. I actually, for my resume submittal, instead of just sending my resume, I sent a video biography. I made a video and that sort of differentiated me from other applicants. And so Jeff Harris, who is the CEO and president of Furniture Land, called me and brought me in for an interview and I was hired. And I began in sort of a sales position, but, but very quickly afterwards, they recognized a talent for speaking and for communicating and for educating other people on my team on how to use technology and also how to sell better, communicate better, um, and just how to learn more about furniture quickly. So they moved me into the sales training department, and that was what es essentially started my career in furniture and in textiles. So I had a really great experience at Furniture Land. And again, I had two really important mentors and mentorship has been a really strong through line throughout my career. So I had a mentor named Laura St. Singh at Furniture Land, who was a really, really important part of my early career and helped shape the way that I teach and, and explain things and communicate to other people. And also Jeff Harris, who, of course, is the CEO. So we worked together very closely. And I was lucky that I had a lot of communication with the leadership at Furniture Land. So after Furniture Land, I worked at an organization called Charter Furniture, which is a contract manufacturer. And I did everything from order entry to working with the product development team to use custom specs and apply COMs to very specialty projects. And we were doing projects. The bulk of my projects were in the Southeast and we completed projects through IHG and through Marriott. And we did everything from mid to high-end properties from a Rick Carlton to a Holiday Inn Express and also Delta lounges, airport lounges around the country. Um, so I, I really drank through a fire hose at that, that position. And it was a really amazing experience to be in a factory and to sort of hear the whir of those machines and to actually be able to go up to an upholsterer that was working on a custom piece and, and work with them collaboratively to, to achieve what the customer wanted. Um, so that was, that was a really amazing experience as well. So during my time at Furniture Land, I was one of the things that I was in charge of in my sales training role was actually their Monday sales meeting. So every Monday, Furniture Land South brings a vendor in. And at the time, Krypton Fabric had just begun and Jack Egger, who seems to be a through line through this, <laughs> through this discussion, Jack Egger came into Furniture Land and was invited to speak in our Monday sales meeting at the very beginning of Krypton Home. So this was um, this was sort of in the fledgling stages. And so I sat with Jack and helped him put together the PowerPoint and explain to him the best way to speak and sort of the best way to invigorate the salespeople and get them excited about Krypton Home. And so then didn't hear really from Jack for a very long time. I think we added each other on LinkedIn and then never, you know, didn't speak for a while afterwards. And so during my time at Charter, Jack actually reached out to me on LinkedIn and said that he had a role, that he was searching for someone that enjoyed speaking and really enjoyed traveling a lot and um, was a good educator, an experienced educator. And so that was what brought me to Krypton was actually Jack. And again, working with people at Furniture Land and also making sure that every single person that I worked with at Furniture Land was was equipped and ready to speak to those salespeople in an effective way. So, um, so being good at presenting and helping other people be good at presenting. So Jack was a huge, uh, was, was the reason that I'm here. And so in terms of what I do at Krypton, I, and we can probably transition to the next slide, Elise. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I got you, I got you, I got you. So in terms of what I do at Krypton, it began really as sort of just a training role and starting to standardize the training and the message that we are bringing to retailers and to design teams, design firms, and sort of little boutique fabric stores and furniture stores throughout the country. And it's really expanded to include ASID CEUs, uh, administering those for, for us, as well as crafting and and 
building the relationships that we have at retail, looking at what kind of um, what kind of point of purchase they want, what kind of um, marketing materials, education materials that they want, what what's being successful for them, what's helping them sell, what's not helping them sell, um, what they want and what's missing, uh, what they're asking for. If there's a pattern that they see coming that that becomes really popular, then then sort of taking that data in and sharing it with the Krypton team so that we can respond and pivot uh, and, and provide our customers and, and the end user with what they're looking for, as well as doing pop-up events and market events and, uh, and textile education events as well. So that's that's really in terms of what of what I do, that's it's sort of a post sales role, part post sales role, part marketing role and part uh, part educator role. So I'm going to turn it over to one of our sales managers, our amazing sales managers, Katie Smarr, who's going to tell you a little bit about what she does and how she how she enlivens and emboldens our team. Woo. Woo Good morning. Uh, thank you, Sydney. And thank you guys again for having us. Um, so I, I too did not have a background in textiles or furniture. Um, if you had said to me 10 years ago that I would end up in the textile industry, I probably would have said, is that a thing? Like, <laughs> um, so I'm originally from West Virginia. I've now been in North Carolina for about eight years. Um, I had done hair and makeup as a hobby for many, many years. And in 2012, I decided that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave West Virginia. I'm going to do hair and makeup. Um, I'd never been to Greensboro. It was a halfway point between where my family lived in West Virginia and one of my best friends who lived in Savannah, Georgia. And I essentially picked it out on a map and was like, this is where I'm going to go. Came down a week before, <laughs> found an apartment, and a week later, I was here. So, um, about a month after I moved here, I got hired on with Clinique, um, which was amazing. So I started off as a consultant with them for a few months and then quickly moved into a business manager um, role with the company. Um, so from there, I made some relationships with other people who were in um, that industry, the makeup industry. And as I succeeded in my sales management role with Clinique. Um, one of my good friends at the time who worked for Estee Lauder kind of took notice of that. And um, so my counter at the time became number one in our district. Um, after I finally got staffed, I maintained that uh, position um, until I transitioned into the textile industry. But um, so my friend at Estee Lauder, she, her husband's in the industry and they were looking for somebody to come on board and the company's actually called Delio Textiles, which you may be familiar with. Um, and they just kind of came in and plucked me uh, from Clinique. I was like, you know, this sounds like a good opportunity. It's an industry that um, seems interesting and creative. And I started with Delio in 2014. Um, and quality control. So again, I had no idea really what I was doing. <laughs> I knew what a warp and a weft was and um, quality control was honestly probably the best place to start because you are going to learn really fast, like the intimacies of a piece of fabric. Um, so I, I just kind of hit the ground running, um, you know, as Sydney mentioned, learning from your failures. I did a lot of things wrong over the years. <laughs> and um, learned quickly. So I was with them for four years. And um, by the time I left there, I had the opportunity to work in many different departments because it was a smaller family owned company. Um, so I did quality control, logistics, custom projects, um, management for showtime, writing procedures for the company, like training. So you name it, I probably touched on it at some point or another. Um, but I think that really set me up for success whenever the opportunity came to be part of the Krypton team. So performance fabric was something that I was familiar with, but um, certainly something that I needed to learn more about. So um, in 2018, uh, Jack Egger, <laughs> 
Well, he's gonna so love that we mentioned his name multiple times over and over again. He's gonna like be so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Chris, Chris, Krypton was actually my neighbor at, when I was at DeLeo. So um, I had known Jack since I started in the industry. And yeah, a couple years ago, the opportunity came and I was like, you know what, it sounds like it's going to be a great fit for me. It's going to be um, some new things that I hadn't experienced yet. So um, I jumped on board and started working with this amazing team. Literally, I moved two floors up in the building. <laughs> um, and so my first year with Krypton, I was working with Sydney on the outreach team. And she just kind of, again, hit the ground running with me and gave me the rundown on like everything you need to know performance wise. Um, of course, like our team, it, it was just, our team is so very fluid. Like, again, we've mentioned how different we all are and how different our backgrounds are, but it's just like a fluid collaboration that we have and work so well together. So it, it's just a great team to be a part of a great industry to be a part of. Um, so as far as my role now, I transitioned into sales in January and, um, relationship based selling. That's, really a huge part of what we do and not just in my role but the relationships in the industry it's a huge industry but it's also a very small group um so those relationships those connections networking i can't tell you how important that is um just because once you it's like what six degrees of separation once you meet one person you probably know like half a dozen more so um so that's what I focus on, um, just working with the customers, um, analysis, that kind of ties back into our, our design team um, and really outreach. So we're all constantly analyzing fabrics, feedback from customers, placement at retail. Um, we're looking what was successful, like what's happening in the world as Denise Denise mentioned current events, like it's so important because when things are shifting and changing, we also have to shift and change and, and make sure our approach and what we're putting into the market is still really appropriate for our customers and, and for you. Um, project management. Um, so that's one part of my role that I really enjoy. Um, that kind of keeps my hands in a lot of different projects. Um, so helping with showtime, custom projects for customers. Um, there's a few things that I've been able to dive into since we've purchased Abercrombie, working with the teams there. Um, so organization is key. <laughs> I, if I made a suggestion, if you're interested in project management, figure out what works for you from an organizational standpoint and really stick to that because um, it's going to serve you very well as you move forward in your career, no matter what industry you're in, hopefully this one. Um, and then lastly, customer retention. I mean, you're building those relationships, you're networking, um, you are really familiarizing yourself with the people that you're around on a regular basis and, and continuing to develop those relationships and letting them blossom is, is just a great thing. So you can do that and, just a phone call, you can, you know, meet them for a socially distant dinner or tennis or <laughs> whatever it may be. So um, those are my roles. The last thing that I really want to touch on is um, an organization that I founded with another colleague from DeLeo, Katie Williams. Um, so we founded Young Textile Professionals in 2016, I believe it was, 15, 16. Um, Again, I didn't have a background in the industry, and um, as we were talking about young people coming up and, and becoming staples um, for the industry, we just thought, hey, what if we made this organization, Young Textile Professionals, it can support students, it can support um, new hires, it can support like education, um, we became affiliated with ITA in 2017. Um, we've had great support from them. We've had great support from our company, other industry companies. So we do have events during market and showtime. We do um, tech expert talks. 
<laughs> of course, we're still working out some virtual events, but we do have an upcoming event um, that we're doing. It's a virtual happy hour and trades. So if you're interested in more information about that, please uh, feel free to make a note in the chat. But um, so last but certainly not least, we're going to loop back to Elise Gabrielson, who is our marketing director, and uh, she'll get us wrapped up. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, everybody. So Elise, again, hello. Um, so a little about me. I grew up in Michigan. Um, I still live here today. I grew up in a small country town known for uh, peaches and apple picking. Um, I think I may have always been a marketer, setting up wagons and merchandise veggies on the side of a dirt road and selling it at age 10 and really thinking about, you know, how do I want it to look and how much money am I going to make? And, you know, how do those green beans need to be merchandised on that wagon? <laughs> um, I went to college at Central Michigan University and I got a degree in PR and marketing. Um, and similar to Katie and Sydney, um, you know, I had no idea really what the home furnishing industry was then. I, you know, I, I have absolutely no background in textiles or home furnishings. Um, so I needed an internship in order to graduate from CMU, and I got hooked up with an oil company here in Michigan. Um, it was a paid internship, so that was pretty sweet. Uh, they offered me a position um, once I was completed with my internship, and so I gladly took it knowing that I would have you know, a paycheck once I was done with school. At the oil company, I did everything from creating retail gas station programs, um, where I was the marketing girl who traveled around uh, to a lot of the different gas stations around the Metro Detroit area, giving away free hot dogs and, you know, branded swag. And the hot dog steamer was always in my car. So it smelled like hot dogs in my car for a solid two years. So um, the interesting thing about kind of going around and, and meeting with all these gas station people it kind of helped me understand like programs and things like that could help incentivize or, you know, bring attention and bring traffic to, to these stores. So it's kind of interesting because in, there's some similar, some similarities to kind of what we're doing at Krypton too, that kind of is similar with, you know, slinging hot dogs and creating promotional events um, at, at gas stations. I also did stuff on my first job. I was able and fortunate to, uh, create the philanthropic arm of the company. Um, and so I got to create, you know, what is the, what does the company stand for and what are the types of things we want to give back to? And I was able to design parks and in low income cities and, um, work on some cool stuff from there. From there, after working, um, at the oil company for a couple of years, I took a job, um, for a large advertising agency in Detroit. Uh, Detroit is known as the automotive hub, so all the major uh, automotive companies are there. And I worked for the advertising agency that handled all the Ford, Ford Motor Company um, uh, work. So I got to work with a lot of amazing designers and I got to see um, amazing work, amazing talent, and really see kind of what a huge brand like Ford Motor Company, you know, does on every, on every level of the marketing mix. So that was pretty cool. Um, a friend of mine uh, was working at Krypton um, in the design department. Um, Jack Egger just popped his head, everyone, into my office. So he says hello. Um, so my friend Gianna was working in the design uh, area for Krypton Home. And she texted me one day and was like, hey, I think you need to come and talk to Randy Rubin, the founder of Krypton. I think there's, there's a marketing position. They're doing some cool things. You should come talk to them. Um, and me not really knowing anything about the industry. I'm like, you know, it's a, probably a good idea to, you know, stay on top of my interview skills. So I'll, I agreed to come talk to her. Um, not really looking to move. I chatted with Randy and I was totally entranced with her energy. Um, you know, she wanted to make Krypton Home a household name. And that's what she wanted this marketing person to help her do. And for me, I was like, well, hell yeah, I want to do that. That sounds amazing. I have no idea what this company is or what textiles are or the industry. But yeah, this sounds like something I, I, I want to be a part of. Um, so five years later, I'm still here and I absolutely love what I do. Um, I feel so fortunate to get to work with, you know, the best team in the biz. 
I get to work with all of these amazing designers and big, huge brands. And because our fabric and because the way that we sell our fabrics, I'm able to work with furniture manufacturers and design distributors like Kravit and these big names that, you know, designers and consumers alike um, are aware of. Uh, I get to work with influencers, large magazines like large magazines, brands like Airbnb to create meaningful programs to cri promote Krypton and to, to continue to get the Krypton name um, out there. Uh, so on this slide here, I just want to point out that's my dog, Sugar. She is actually laying in the sun, enjoying uh, the B Business of Home magazine. If you guys don't get that mag, it's a great one to sign up for because it's all about the home furnishing industry and there's a lot of really uh, great information. And I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit because we have a couple more minutes. Um, that child I'm holding in the picture is not mine. Um, I don't have any kids, but that is my uh, four-year-old best friend. She is my niece and I'm obsessed with her and um, I love her to death. And then that's me dressed up as a giraffe for Halloween. So <laughs> other, there's nothing else to say other than that. Um, so anyway, so my role at Krypton, um, the real kind of, you know, what I'm trying to do on a daily basis is creating meaningful programs um, to get the brand out there in a way that makes sense for the audience. Te and textiles, not, there's not a ton of textile brands that really are out in front of um, the consumer and the design community. So, you know, we're always trying to get our brand out there so that people walk into retail furniture stores asking for Krypton by name or walking into showrooms at show me your Krypton. So how do we do that? Um, we create, you know, marketing campaigns. Um, we are doing a ton with social media. We're developing marketing materials and tools and brand tools and social media assets. What we try to do in marketing is make it as easy as possible for all the people that are selling Krypton um, to sell it for us. Um, let's see. Another main point in marketing, uh, you know, besides producing content, storytelling, and providing tools and creating vision statements and positioning the brand. Our main job is to listen. Um, we listen to what people want in the market. It informs everything, uh, everything that we do. Um, we love to hear what everyone thinks about Krypton and how we can best serve all of our constituencies, including our employees, brand partners, vendors, clients, and consumers of our community. We know that you guys are the future and thought leaders of our industry. And we want you to know that we're listening to you both at this exciting time of growth and learning and beyond through the trajectory of your careers and ours. We can't wait to see what you do and we'd be excited to be a part of it in some way if we can. Um, so with that, I'd like to start taking some questions. Um, do you guys have any question for design, for marketing, for, for any of us? We're here and we'd love to answer. Great, at least that was fantastic. Uh, Denise, Sydney, Katie, William, we loved the entire presentation and we have more questions than we're going to be able to get through. But <laughs> I'm going to go That's ahead good. and pose, I'm going to pose a few of them for you. So uh, what's the best way to connect in the textile design community? What are the best practices in each branch of your team? Kind of a big question. Good luck with short answers. Okay. Um... I'll start and then Katie, Smart, do you wanna go after? Sure, yeah. Start from there. So for me, just staying connected for marketing, what that means for me is um, understanding and having relationships with the brands that carry our furniture and our fabrics on furniture. So really having and building relationships with them to understand you know, what's important to them. Um, and how you create those relationships is just, you know, spending time checking in and, you know, when you're in town or when you're able to meet in person, you know, making the effort to just create meaningful relationships, even outside of just for the purpose of work. Yeah. It's just become friends with people because I think that really helps you and opens up opportunities. Um, at least for me, from a marketing standpoint is getting to know people has opened doors that I would have never would have never guessed. Um, yeah, so yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think, I think too, just getting your foot in the door. There are lots of ways to do that. I mean, certainly internships for market and showtime, and people are always looking for um, interns. They're both paid and unpaid, and um, there's a couple different 
sites that you can go through for that. Um, ITA is the organization that, that manages Showtime, so really connecting through them is great. They have an educational foundation um, that supports a lot of networking. Um, they support the Young Textile Professionals group as well, so really just being in contact with people like that and um, you know, participating in virtual events if you're local or can travel coming to market, coming to Showtime, seeing what it's all about and just really saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do, like what I'm interested in and and finding, uh, you know, people that can become friends, people that can become mentors and um, really just not being afraid to kind of completely immerse yourself in the people in the industry. I wanted to jump in quickly also. I would be remiss if I didn't share my Jack story. Um, <laughs> I met him while working at FIT. Uh, he brought me up to Sunbury where we had a partnership between Krypton and Sunbury working on a project. And so he brought me to my first mill ever. Um, and then I saw him eight years later at a party that I just decided to go to during market at Cisco. Um, I was fully working at another job and Jack and I kind of saw each other and we were like, you? So I think... <laughs> It's staying connected and meeting people. Just show up. Yeah. Like, have a conversation, even if it's not about textiles. Right. Be there. Like, someone, if someone sees you and meets you and sees your spark and your ambition, they're going to latch on. Yeah. I think our stories illustrate that. So, I think show up. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be scared. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, here's a question of how has the mill been impacted as a result of the pandemic? Have you seen an, a decrease in production and opportunity or an increase? And how do you see this impacting domestic textile production overall in the coming years? Uh, what, what, a, what a great question. Yeah. So um, we see moving forward as a really good opportunity for us to grow business domestically. Um, with the fact that we are a performance fabric company, people do want something that will perform, that will last, that will be comfortable, and also is disinfectable and cleanable. <laughs> and there is the fear of, of sourcing overseas and what, the, what is that going to look like in six months. So we see a really positive um, growth for next year domestically. That's fantastic to hear. Uh, this question perhaps is for Sydney specifically, but obviously to any one of you. Presentation skills are perhaps even more important in our current global environment. What specific tips might you have for students in this area? Sure. So I would say the thing, all the things that I use when I am training someone else in my department. So number one, I know that this is not a fun thing to do, but if you will please, please, please record yourself, take a video of yourself mm -hmm. doing a presentation, and it will be the least, your least favorite thing that you have done <laughs> in a hot minute. <laughs> but it, it will show you the body ticks that you have. It will show you the overused transition words that you have. It will show you how to appear more, especially on a video. Um, it's really important to appear warm and to be warm and to be inviting. And uh, I encourage you to read, read about it, read about presentation skills. I am always, um, you know, of course, reading things like business of home, but also looking at other presenters, looking at, and not necessarily just presenters about textiles and fabric, but um, people like, for example, Tony Robbins or anyone that's a really, really mammoth presenter and what they're doing and how they're doing it and the way that they're speaking, and how they are keeping their voices exciting. And, and I can't stress enough how difficult it will be to watch yourself on video, but I, I really encourage it. And take notes and do it every time. Take, set up a little, you know, there's really inexpensive phone tripods you can set up in the back of the room and set up a phone tripod and record yourself. And it will be the most informative feedback that you can possibly get. Um, and I'll add something to that. Something that Sydney did with me uh, when I was part of the outreach team and she was training me um, to present and, and educate uh, the retailers, she, she was a trusted person that would actually watch my video back with me and give me expert feedback on that too. So if you do have a friend that, um, that you trust that'll say, hey, like maybe think about this or maybe think about that, it's, it's really also very valuable to have somebody that can give that feedback too. 
Those are great recommendations. Well, we're going to end this session with one comment from one of our guests. Um, Love seeing Krypton at BDNY every year. Every piece of furniture on earth should be made with Krypton. Oh. So. Yeah. <laughs> with that, thank you so much to all of you and the Krypton team. We'll make sure that Jack knows when we see him at two o'clock today, we'll make sure that Jack knows his name came up over and over. <laughs> That's Again, great. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you kicking off our design symposium. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Bye. 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 Bye.